In this video, we'll take a look at the two main type of components that you can build with React. We'll take a look at class components and function components, and we'll also conceptually discuss state and events. So let's begin. React offers two kinds of components that offer you ample flexibility for all kinds of use cases. The first kind of component that React offers are known as class components. A class component is subclassed from the component class in React. A class component offers several out-of-the-box features. For instance, class components let you store local state. They also allow you to create lifecycle functions, which we'll examine later in the course. Let's work through a project to understand what a class component is all about. Begin by downloading the class component project from the link given on the screen and extract it to a folder on your computer. We'll then go into the folder and run npm install to download and install all dependencies. Once done, I'll run npm start to kickstart our development server. We'll build a notifications widget in this file named notifications.js. So let's open this file first. As you can see, it is an empty file right now. Ignore the error that you see on the page here. We'll fix it in a moment. The style sheet is already built and imported into the index.js file, so you don't have to worry about it at all. We'll first begin by importing React and the component class in, as you saw in the last module. The component class is needed when you have to create a class component and React needs to be in the scope of files when they have components using JSX in their render methods. To build the notification component, we'll create a class that extends from the component class like so. Next, we will first implement our mandatory render method. This method allows you to define a JSX template which generates React elements when the component renders. Let's build this template as follows. This looks a lot like HTML, doesn't it? Notice however changes to the class attribute which is known as the class name attribute here because we are really writing JavaScript and not HTML and class is a reserved keyword in JavaScript. We'll then export the notification class from this file. This now gets rid of the error and we can now see our UI on the page. This is because we have already imported this component in our index.js file and have mounted it into the DOM. We also have a custom attribute called text that we are using to pass a custom message into the component. This is known as a prop and we'll learn more about it soon. Our component currently renders a static interface on the page. Let's make it more dynamic and usable. First up, instead of the static text for the notification here, let's use the text that we are passing into the text prop when using this component in the index.js file. So all I have to do is create a pair of curly brackets and output the value of this.props.text. Or if that has not been defined, we'll render no notifications. Save the file and you can now see the notification text that this component is receiving from the prop. We also want to be able to toggle the display of the notification bar when a user clicks on this portion of the widget marked N. To achieve this, we will need to use a state variable which will allow us to define the visual state of the notification. I'll begin by declaring a state variable called show and I'll set its initial value to true. Notice how I've declared the variable. This notation, known as class field declarations, is not yet in the ECMAScript standard, but thanks to Babel and Webpack, we can use it today to easily declare state variables and methods that are bound correctly to the class and its scope. Once set, we can now use a ternary operator directly within JSX to either render the notification or not, depending on the value of the state variable named show. Now, whenever show is set to false, the render method here will be recomputed and the notification text panel will be removed from the DOM. This is known as declarative programming, which lets you describe visual elements using data in state variables. To toggle the value of the show variable, we'll create a method known as toggle display, which will use the set state method to toggle the value of the show variable like so. The setState method which is provided to you on a class component should always be used 
when you have to modify the value of a state variable. Now, how would you invoke this method? Simple, we'll create an on click event listener on the toggle button div and we'll simply set it to invoke the function like so. When the user clicks on this element, React internally dispatches a synthetic event, an abstraction for managing browser specific native events seamlessly. Save the file and you can now click on the end button to toggle the display of the notification panel. So that's how you build a class component. Simply speaking, class components offer native support for state management and lifecycle methods. Now the second type of components that you can build with React are known as function components. These are just simple functions that return a React element. They can also bring in a props object as an argument. At its most basic, a function component is a presentational component, which lets you accept data through a prop and render it on the UI. They're perfect for separating the visuals from the container components where your logic and state may reside. These functions do not offer built-in state management or lifecycle methods and other bells and whistles that class components may offer. While originally designed for elementary and simple use cases where class components are an overkill, the beauty of function components is in the syntax and simplicity. They're simple JavaScript functions. And while natively they may lack the bells and whistles of a class component, React recently introduced the Hooks API, which lets you incorporate state and lifecycle methods right within a function component. This means you can upgrade a function component to include state management and other advanced features without converting it to a class component. So without further ado, let's quickly build a function component. We are back in the same app where we built our class component named notification earlier. What we'll do here is extract out the notification text div into its own function component. This is as simple as creating a function named notification text where we'll extract the text prop from the props object argument like so and this function just returns the notification text div template. Now all we have to do is call the component as a regular JSX element and pass in the value of the props to the text prop that we are using in the function component. This will work in exactly the same way as before. That's how easy it is to build a function component. They're simple, lightweight and easily upgradable. So how do you pick between class and function components? While class components as a syntax isn't going anywhere, it is safe to say that function components coupled with the super powerful hooks API offer a cleaner and simpler syntax in the long run and are probably a better bet. Your code is more readable and is also easier to test. Having said that, there's nothing wrong with using class components as well and we'll be using them throughout this course along with function components. Now, one thing you would have noticed across both types of components, the use of JSX for describing the template that renders. Undoubtedly, components are an interesting topic and there's a lot to learn and discover. We hope our video has piqued your interest while helping you learn what they are all about. And of course, we hope you're now feeling ready and excited to explore more. Here's a great way to get started and learn React hands-on. With our outcome-based immersive learning approach, we are fundamentally disrupting the way new age technologies are learned. You'll get to learn, practice, assess, gain insights on your learning, and personalize your learning journey on our easy to navigate AI powered skill building platform, Prism. Stay tuned for more such videos and explore more about how you can equip yourself with immediately demonstrable in-demand skills that'll help you get job ready. And don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon to get notified so you don't miss out on our upcoming videos.